So with the mock MVC instance in place, we now want to test our user controller. So let's step back to it. So as a first example, let's write a test for this get mapping endpoint where we return all users whenever someone hits slash API slash users. So therefore we see the implementation is really basic. So we simply delegate this to our user service, which will then return a list of users. And as our user service is mocked here, we can specify the behavior on our own. So therefore let's add a new test and say, should return a list of users. First thing we want to do, we want to mock our user service and provide the stubbing. So here we say whenever the user service is invoked during this test and the get all users method is called, we will then return, let's say here, a hard coded list of users. So we will just have one user, which is Duke and Duke has also an email address. Then hit save here. So this way we always get now a list of one user. Next, we have to use mock MVC to first prepare and then also fire our request. So therefore we can now use our mock MVC instance here and then say perform. And here we now have to specify our request. So there you can use the mock MVC request builders and then there is get. So this is then an HTTP get, but there is also post put and delete and all those methods you would expect. Uh, but for our test, we want to use a get, then we have to specify the path. So here's API users. Next, we could also tweak it a little bit further. For example, we could define the accept media type. We could say if we would post content alongside our request, which we don't here, we could define its content and its content type. We could also set a cookie. We, could, we can also set our header, for example, or that's, even though this does not matter here, we will set here an header. So this is then part of the request. So once this is in place, we can then write expectations. So here we can then say and expect, and therefore mock MVC provides expectations, which we can use. These are the result measures. And here, for example, we can start with the status. So here we can say, we are expecting the status to be 200. So this also here might throw an exception. So we have to add it to our method signature. So this way we now performing a request against this mocked servlet environment with a HTTP get against this path here, and then also have an header inside and then expect here that our status is 200. So we can then chain multiple measures here let's use the result matrix again and let's write one for example for the body so here you see you can also check the forwarded url you can check the content you can check cookies and what we want to do as we return json we want to use json path so with json path we can now verify for example that the array that is returned has the size one so here we can then use hamcrest matcher and say is one. So this is a function of JSON path where we say we want to calculate the size of the root array. So as we are returning a JSON array with just one user, the size should be one. And apart from this, let's write an additional assertion. So we want to access the first element, the zero indexed, and then also check for the username. And then we can say here, this is now a different syntax. We can say value, say Duke. And the same is true for email. So this way we also have a small API contract test. So if someone would change this username to user underscore name, this test would also detect it. Whereas with a plain unit test, you would not detect such changes. And if we now save this, we should then see a successful test case. And that's the case here. So we can also make a mistake, for example, let's say this is what we expect. And if we then rerun the test, we will also see a proper output. So this mock MVC also returns a lot of 
information when a test fails. So here, for example, we can see how our request looked like. So which method we used, which parameters we added our headers. So here we can now see our fancy custom header. Then also it will print out which controller it used to handle the request. So in case of any debuggings, when the wrong controller is invoked, this is also quite helpful. And then further information. And then here, finally, the mock HTTP servlet response. So this we now see here, our header. So we return JSON and here we see the correct response, but our matcher was just wrong. And that's also what's printed in here. So we expected Dukes plural, but it was singular Duke. So we can fix it again here, rerun the test and should then see again, successful test case. And this way we now saw we can use mock MVC to test our get endpoint. Let's go a step further and see how we can also write a test for our post endpoint where we send payload alongside the request. Let's say should create user. Let's add the exception here first. So therefore use again mock MVC. Let's say perform. Then this time we will use post. So as we create new user, we will use post. API endpoint stays the same, just a different method. Next, we need to send data. So therefore we have to or should define which content type we are sending. And this way we can specify the media type of application JSON. And then the content itself, so either byte or string. So here you could use the object mapper to create it for yourself. But I also want to go the safer way of inlining it here. So if we would change, for example, the username attribute again to underscore using the object mapper, it would properly serialize it to a string. Whereas if we hard code it here, we would detect any API changes to our payload. So while this is a little bit cumbersome, if you are not using Java 14 or Java 15 with the multi-line string for such small payloads, it's still fine to escape here all the characters. And our payload here is really small if we do it correctly. So this way we now specified our payload. So right now we don't have Spring Security in place, but if we would have, we could also use here this with, and for example, add proper CSRF token, because otherwise when uh, having Spring Security in place and not disabling CSRF, this request here would fail, but this we will see later on. So after we performed our request, we can then again, write some expectations. So here we are expecting a different status. So we expect is created. So 201. So if we go back to our user controller and see what actually happens. So here we delegate the storing of the user to our user service. So while we could also here again return the user and then get its, for example, primary key if we would store it in a relational database. Here we are going a different uh, route. We are returning the location header with the username because here the username is unique. So with our test, we can now make sure that this location header is present. So therefore write another expectation. This time we don't want to look at the status, but the header. And then we first can ensure that the location header exists. And after checking it exists, we can also check for its value. So here we want the string value of the location header and then use a Hamcrest matcher and say, here we will just make a contains check. So we want to ensure that the header, which should be then slash API slash users slash Duke contains the username we sent alongside our request here. And last but not least, we can also use Mokito to verify that as this user service is mocked here, uh, we can use Mokito to verify that there was an interaction with our user service. So here we want to verify that the store new user method was called on the user service and any instance of the user class was passed to it. So let's run the test here and we will see a successful test case. So here we now perform the post request against this mock MVC instance where we sent data alongside the request and then made sure the re that the response has the correct header and the correct status code.